Can you hear me? Okay, good stuff. Uh, Roy, what was your assessment of that overall? Because you certainly didn't get much from the VAR this evening. No, I thought that Wolves started very strongly and we didn't. And as a result, we found ourselves two goals to nil down. Um, but I thought we rallied very well. At the end of the first half, we were playing a much better football and certainly the game had evened out considerably. And I thought all through the second half, until the sending off, we were really asking a lot of questions and working very, very hard to try and get ourselves back in the game. But unfortunately, we didn't profit from any mistakes from the Wolves' defence. They, they were very solid and they certainly didn't give us anything. And we weren't exactly lucky with the VAR decisions either. And in particular, the one that bothers me most of all is the, the sending off for Luka Milivojevic for, uh, for a tackle, which for me was a very fair tackle. I was going to ask you about that. Glenn Hoddle said in commentary that he'd been left short on the pass and really had no choice but to go for the ball. Was that the way you saw it? Yes, but I mean, that happens. I mean, unfortunately, people do get left short on passes sometimes and passes do go astray and someone has to step in and try and recover the situation. But as long as they're stepping in and recovering the situation with fair tackles, then I think that's all part and parcel of the game. You also look quite perplexed before... Uh, half time when the VAR didn't award you the penalty was that frustration or did you feel at the time that maybe the wrong decision had been made or have I completely misread that I, 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 I haven't seen the, the video of that I'm told that it was a, a close offside decision on Patrick Van Arnholt before the ball was played in and uh, an obvious foul was then committed in my, in my opinion the referee saw it the same way but Obviously, the VAR saw an offside which occurred in the build-up to the penalty situation, so it gets chalked off. Were you concerned with the amount of time it took to decide over the red card? It seemed to last for ages, and we're meant to be kind of cleaning that thing, that kind of thing up and trying to narrow down the amount of time we have to wait around for decisions. Well, I'd rather, if it's going to happen, that it leads to the right decision. And on this occasion, I must say, and I've, I've told Martin, it's not, I'm not talking behind his back, I'm not criticising him in particular. Uh, he, he does what he has to do and he, he makes decisions according to the, the current VAR recommendations. But I've got to say that uh, he didn't in, initially, I'm sure, think that that was a, a foul even, let alone a red card offence. And it's the slow motion stuff when you go over to the video, which maybe encourages the referee to see something which for me wasn't there. Just finally for me, Roy, can I invite you to pay tribute to Nobby Styles, who died today at the age of 78? Yes, I mean, obviously, like all football lovers and uh, you know, being very much a, uh, a very keen spectator of the TV, of course, uh, that wonderful final, my image is always going to be a Nobby at the end of the game, having given his heart and soul, running around the field as much as he did and putting so much effort into protecting the lead that England had. His contribution to that World Cup success was enormous. I think that everyone who knows football understands and respects that. And I know that he had enormous respect from his teammates in, in that team. I unfortunately never got the chance to meet Nobby myself, but I do know other members of the team and they've spoken to me about how highly they valued his contribution and what a wonderful job he, he did. I've only ever heard good things about him, but unfortunately I didn't have the opportunities I say to meet him. But I'm very sad to hear his passing today and can only really pass on my condolences to his family and his friends. Thanks very much, Roy. Cheers. Pleasure. Thanks, Adrian. Um, can you raise your hand if you'd like a question, please? Andy, oh, sorry, where are you? Andy McSteen. Yeah. Hello, Roy. Um, yeah, can, uh, will you be appealing that red card for Luca, Roy? I think so, yeah. I mean, I haven't spoken to anyone at the club yet, but if it's up to me, I would certainly want to appeal it because I think to get three games for that will be, will be a gross injustice. Um, and of course, it will, it will round off a very disappointing evening for us because, you know, we lost the game. Um, I don't know that I would be quite as disappointed with what we did in the 65, 70 minutes had we finished with 11 men and could look forward to you know, picking 
a similar team perhaps for the next games, but to face the prospect of losing Luca for three games for something which I really do not agree with, that, that, that's going to make this evening a much tougher uh, pill to swallow. Of course, um, you've seen it on video replays. You're not just talking from when you saw it in the game, of course, just, just for housekeeping. In the game, to be perfect, I didn't notice it at all. No, I mean, it certainly wasn't the sort of foul or the sort of situation in the game that would make you jump up and think that's a terrible challenge and that's a, that's a red card. Um, the, ball, the ball went away thanks to the fact that uh, Luca won the ball and it moved further forward. And I was following the ball, of course, to see how we were going to defend the next, the next situation. And I was very surprised when I looked up and saw that Lutinia was on the ground. And next thing, the referee was heading for the monitor. OK, so, sorry, just to clarify, you, you didn't watch it on the video yet. You just I watched it on the video. Oh, OK, sorry. Oh, absolutely. Watched it on the yeah, video. yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watched it on the video. I mean, as I just said, in my opinion, it was, it was a fair challenge. OK, and just final from me, Roy, thanks for your time. Um, Nathaniel and Patrick uh, um, both played 90 minutes today. Just a word on them, obviously, Patrick's first game since Man United and, and of course, Nathaniel first 90 minutes for quite a while as well. Yeah, yeah, I thought they, they dealt with the situation reasonably well. I think, like the team, we, we grew into the game. Uh, we handicapped ourselves with the performance in the first 20 minutes, especially one or two of the mistakes we were making out there, which unfortunately led to them scoring two goals. Uh, but after that, I thought that we got stronger and stronger, and I think those two got stronger too. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Jay. Thank Thanks, you. Jenny. Are there any other questions? Roy, just, um, did... Roy should, you have had a, should Zahar have a penalty in that second half, do you think? Yeah, I've seen the video of that. I mean, obviously, at the time, it's difficult to tell from the touchline. It would be a video situation. That would definitely have been a... One for VAR, but on that occasion, uh, the referee decided or VA decided not to look into it. But I think that was that was a, a potential penalty, yeah, because I think the uh, player does catch Wilf's ankle. Wilf himself, of course, thinks it was a penalty. But the bottom line is this, you know, when you go two goals to nil down in any game, especially this level of football, it's always going to be hard to get back in it. And all I can say is that I think the players today, they did their very level best to, to get back in it. And I thought they... They worked very hard in the second half and played some very good football in the second half. But it, it was never going to be easy because we were relying perhaps on something like a penalty being given for the situation that you mentioned, or a little bit of fortune, or them maybe making the sort of mistake that we made to, to give them their second goal. Thanks, Ryan. Okay, we'll just take one more if there's one more from Nate. Yeah. Who's, Nate's coming on. Hi Roy, uh, I just wanted to bring back to the, the penalty that got taken away. It seems like the, there needs to be more in, instant communication with VAR because it, it seemed very harsh to have Andros Townsend waiting on the spot to see if he can take his kick or not. Um, what, are you, what are your thoughts on the communication between VAR and the pitch? Yeah, I don't have strong opinions on that. You know, I have strong opinions on quite a few things. Whether I have strong opinions on that, I presume that you know they have if they're going to make those decisions, which are often quite quite tricky decisions and, and, and often reliant upon a very small margin for an offside, for example, yes or no, I suppose they need to take the time it takes. But it's a little bit difficult, you know, in, in, in real time, we're celebrating the penalty because we thought it was a very good move and we thought that we'd created a very good situation which led to a penalty and was going to get us back in the game. And then all of a sudden you realise especially when the referee goes to the monitor, that no, it's all over because once they go to the monitor, you know what's going to happen. Thanks, Roy. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you.